Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how I make my anti-aging face mask using aloe vera. I have an aloe vera plant here. She's kind of neglected the past few months. I often forget to water her because I was quite busy and I have so many plants in the condo. So when an aloe vera doesn't get enough water, what happens is the gel in its leaves will dry out and then it will bend like that. It doesn't look good anymore. And when it happens, what I do is cut it off. I just cut it off. And there's another one here that that's bended. I'm just gonna cut it out too. And when I do this, I try my best to be careful not to wound the other leaves because that wounded part, although it will heal, it will still um, the part of that leaf will dry out. So I try to avoid that. So these leaves, I'm going to use them to make my homemade anti-aging face mask. Let's do it. We're now here in my kitchen and what we're gonna do is peel the leaves so that we can get the gel out of it. As you can see, the sap, which is poisonous and can cause skin irritation, has come out. And what we're gonna do now is wash the leaves a bit because it's full of dust. These other leaves here, I got them probably two months ago. I had to harvest them because they were drying out too. And as you can see, they're still pretty good. Um, the technique that you have to do is after you harvest it, if you can't use it right away, you just let the sap come out and you have to keep the leaves dry because I experienced a lot of rotting before when I don't pay attention. I just put them all here like that and then all the sap comes off there and it becomes like a pool of liquid and over time that liquid is going to cause rot on the leaves. Once it starts to rot on the bottom, everything is going to rot. But if you keep it dry, after two months, it's still pretty good. Another thing that you have to remember is that the sap they can easily stain your surfaces like wood and anything else. For example, here my wood has a lot of red stains. Red stains here, they're from my aloe vera stained all over already and that's when I realized that once the sap gets into the wood surface I have to immediately clean it out and wash it off with water otherwise it's gonna stay there I, I try to remove as much green as possible and then after I remove the top I just go ahead and scrape it from the bottom I really am very careful in removing all the green because they my skin tend to react harshly on that green part it irritates my skin so I have to make sure that everything that I get it's just pure gel.
Now after I get the gel, I put it, soak it in the water. Okay, this is um, one liter of water. All the gel goes straight there so that the yellow sap will be washed. And I'm going to wash that twice. Now that the gel is clean, we can now use it for our face mask and we can also use it to add for the smoothie or juice that we make. But tonight, I'm going to use some of this gel for the face mask and the next step is to blend the gel. Now, there are a few things that I want to mention. Normally, I would blend all of these but because I already have a lot of blended gel I have five of this ice cube former I filled it with the blended gel and I don't have any ice cube formers available anymore it's five of them in the freezer so what I do now is to store my gel um, as is because they're already cut, right? They're already cut, ready for blending. They're already clean. So I store them in portions on this um, plastic container. Yeah, this is for food. I use it uh, in portions so that when I run out of my blended gel, I'm going to defrost this and I can blend again and put in my ice cube formers. I've got tons of these, like really an entire drawer in my freezer downstairs in the basement full of my trowel in portions. So it, it can last me a decade <laughs> of trowel. That's why I'm not going to blend this everything but for the purpose of this video i'm going to blend a bit and i also want to show you after you've blended your trowel and put in your ice cube formers how to easily remove it uh, so if it's frozen like this it's a bit difficult to remove so the simple technique that you can do so for example if i want to take this i'm just gonna rinse the back part with hot water. And 
then there she goes. So now it's ready for a face mask. I'll just use a few of these. And the rest will go to the freezer. Some are still solid, so I'm going to dip this um, blender so that I can really blend everything. As you can notice, I didn't use water, it's just pure aloe vera. Now this is perfect, everything is liquid, no more solid, so this is good. So my face is now clean and I'm ready for my face mask. Now we're going to mix some essential oils to our blended aloe vera gel. This is rose hip oil and this is fractionated coconut oil. Now I read somewhere that women shouldn't use a fractionated oil on their skin because the skin will dry out. I'm not sure about that because I use these all the time and my skin is not dry. Three teaspoon of aloe vera gel is already enough for me, but you may need more if you know it's really just up to you. One, two, eight, nine, ten. I add ten drops of rosehip oil, and again, it's just my preference. It may be too much for you, you should adjust depending on your like four five and I just add five drops of coconut oil and then I mix it together and then I use cotton to scoop my mixture and then put it on my face now of course you can use just your hands and your or your fingers, um, it's up to you. This is just my personal preference. number one to go so we have to always make sure in getting the here And 
the back. That's why I like using the cotton because it it doesn't get messy. But it's just the fingers. After I apply the mask on my neck, the mask on my face has dried up. So I can apply again one more time, but I use a new cotton just to make sure that I don't, you know, sometimes when you apply on your neck, there's a bit of dirt that's grabbed there. So I just don't want to put that on my face. And that's the reason why I use a new cotton. And then I can apply again one more time. When I apply this, I really put a lot on my forehead because when I was working in Bangkok, I was in uh, I was a foreign teacher in Bangkok for six years. I often walked under the sun, and I never applied sunblock. I didn't wear hats. Although I liked wearing sunglasses, but it was always too hot. If I, from after school, I would walk to my after class tutorials. I never protected my forehead. And it's my husband, actually, <laughs> who noticed that my forehead is a lot darker than, than my cheeks or compared to the rest of my face and he always teased me that I have black forehead <laughs> we were not married yet we were still you know he was still my boyfriend and he always teased me that my forehead is black and that's when I realized that yeah, that's true, you know. My forehead is so burnt that it's a lot darker than my <laughs> compared to the rest of my face, of my neck and of my skin. <laughs> and I use aloe vera to combat the damage on my forehead. And I can see that it's, it's helping helping me I want to even out the color of my forehead <laughs> I want it to match the color of my face <laughs> my husband always tells me that I'm a dark woman and I said no I'm not as dark as you you're darker and he says well just compare my arm to your forehead <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> you know <laughs> It's not meant to make me feel bad, but it also uh, makes me aware of the reality of it. And I realized, you know, for the last, wait, for most of my life, because from the Philippines to Thailand, I was always under the sun. And I never cared about my skin. I just would not wear sunblock, would not wear umbrella, would not wear hats. So the skin is damaged. Now it's empty. And I've applied it for everything. So as you can see, you just need three teaspoons for how many layers of application and it doesn't feel itchy, it doesn't feel sticky. Well, it's a bit sticky, but when it dries up and it dries up really quickly, then you don't feel the stickiness anymore. 
I don't feel itchy because the gel was cleaned really well and there's no irritants that are left in the gel so I can just go to bed like this I don't wash it off anymore you know I've brushed my teeth I've put on my Invisalign <laughs> I'm ready for bed so if you want to have a homemade anti-aging mask try the aloe vera the blended aloe vera and you just need rose hip oil coconut oil if you don't have coconut oil it's fine if you don't have rose hip oil if you don't have both it's fine you just apply your blended aloe vera aloe vera is very effective in helping our skin stay young but for a disclaimer okay i just I don't want to mislead you I don't do this every night because I don't have the time every night but I do do this every once in a while when I have uh, time for me you know me time to take care pamper myself then I do this or there are seasons when I kind of feel um, low about my skin sometimes I feel like oh I feel feel old I'm worried about my wrinkles about my skin then <laughs> I go back to my aloe vera I will do that every night for probably a month and then I get tired and I will lie low again and just do my normal evening routine in my next video I mean when I get the time in the future video I will show you my normal routine without the aloe vera so i hope this helps you if you haven't yet make sure to subscribe to my channel i try to upload twice a week and if you like this video please click like and i'll see you again bye